Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about ways on how you can save money in your business. Now, obviously, there's a topic that business owners are always interested in. There's a lot of um, parts in your business where you're spending money where you can optimize. And one area that is being overlooked by a lot of merchants are your credit card processing fees. Sometimes a little bit hidden. Sometimes people are a bit reluctant to look into this, but actually this is a really great chance to save a lot of money. So that's the topic today. And with me on the show, I have Matthew Ray. He is with merchantsconsulting.com and the name says it already. They are helping with optimizing your costs when it comes to different fees and processing fees. Matt has been working in the financial world for over 10 years after quickly learning the world of payments for the last eight years. Matt has been exposing the industry for what it is truly is. Matt oversees the sales team for Merchant Coast Consulting and developing new employees and educating enterprise to bring to more to customers on how they can cut costs within the payment world. So let's dive right into it. Hi, Matt. How are you today? I'm doing great, Klaus. How are you doing? Very well. Matt, saving on credit card processing fees. I think that's something that is overlooked massively by a lot of merchants. Tell me a little bit of the background story. What got you into that? Yeah, so my background was previous to uh, working with Merchant Cost Consulting. I was working for a large payment processing company um, here in Boston, Mass. That's where we're headquartered out of. That's where I originally got into the world of payments, right? And this isn't something that you go to school for, right? You don't get a degree or go to university for this. Uh, it was really just a job that kind of fell into my lap once I had graduated. Um, and in short, the payment world is, is really deceptive for a lot of different reasons. Um, but when I was working there, right, how the majority of sales reps get compensated is the higher that they set the credit card processing rates on a merchant, the more money goes into their pocket, right, from a commission standpoint. And that doesn't align with the merchant itself, right? Merchants are trying to find something that's functional for their business, especially in the e-commerce world. We're looking for a gateway that works, a checkout screen, et cetera. And you want something at the lowest overall cost, just that's business 101. And the issue was, is that in addition to, you know, setting the rates high as a commission sales rep, the other issue in the payments world are rate increases, right? So it's one thing to get a rate, but it's another thing to keep it there. And a lot of what was happening was is over time, I would have clients call me and say, you know, Matt, the rate was supposed to be X. But now it's increased to why, what's going on here? And that was out of my control, right? That was the corporate company raising pricing, like you see a lot in different industries. Um, but it was, this is a large cost, especially in the e-commerce world. And it was deceptive because they weren't notifying the clients. They didn't even notify us on the sales team what was going on. And it put a bad taste in our mouth, right? So we started this back in 2016, where we said, you know, we can really bring transparency to the payment industry by letting merchants understand how the pricing works, how interchange fees work, the service markups over interchange, and really exposing it for what it is, and helping clients eliminate the fees that they pay, typically without the headache of having to make any changes whatsoever, right? So that, that's the background and how we got started, and we can obviously dive into it more. But that's really what was the motive for the inception of MCC, and where we have a focus, right, to help businesses eliminate the fees that they pay without the headache of hopefully having to make any changes. So. Mm -hmm. Now, these fees are sometimes, as you said, they're sometimes very well hidden. And um, a lot of merchants, specifically starters in the e-commerce world or small and medium enterprises who don't have the capacity, the time to look into it, will be surprised at the end of the month uh, what they pay to a um, payment processor and what really goes through the window. And I think they don't have control over it. Now, Shopify makes it relatively easy. And I think that has to do with convenience to pick just a payment gateway with the attached payment processes um, with the setup. And people are not really aware that there is a million other options out there. So where do you help or where is the, the, the biggest um, pain point for merchants when they approach you? Uh, what triggers them to, to change what they do? So it's a fully loaded question, right? So what Shopify, Stripe, PayPal, Adyen, a lot of these newer players in the payment space that typically focus on 
e-commerce businesses, reoccurring payment subscription model SaaS products, right? Um, is they've created a pricing plan that makes it super, super easy for you, the merchant, to understand, right? So a lot of the starting packages start at like 2.9% plus 30 cents a transaction. And then if you take American Express, it's whatever, 3.5% plus 30 cents a transaction. And as you, the business owner, the merchant, that's super easy for you to understand. You know basically what you're going to be paying every month for the type of card that you accept. The issue with that is, and we'll get into it, but if you peel back the layer, like an onion, right, there's so many different things and fees involved in that one flat rate that they've packaged all together. You have interchange costs, you have assessment fees, you have network costs. I mean, the list goes on as far as what that is, markup costs. And they know all of that, and they price that into the rates that they're offering merchants. And a big thing that merchants don't understand is all of that that goes into the pricing plan. And yes, it may be super simple for you to understand as a business and maybe to track for your expenses. But if I were to tell you that, hey, you know, you're paying 2.9% for 30 cents a transaction, but really the underlying cost for Shopify, Stripe, PayPal, Adyen is like 1.7%. And they're making that difference in commission spread, you'd be pretty unhappy about it because you would say, well, wow, that's, that's super expensive. They're making a ton of money on every single transaction that you're processing, right? Another big thing within this realm of payments is that e-commerce websites are always looking for functionality. You're looking for something that has simple code, simple integration. If you have whatever, an ERP system, uh, an inventory management system, some type of software outside of the gateway. You want something that ties in really seamlessly or has open code, open API, whatever. And these companies that I mentioned previously make it super simple to do that. Stripe, Shopify, it's easy to build a website and have the backend code just integrate right with your checkout screen or your gateway. And you are paying for some of that, the convenience to do that and the ease of use to do that and the tech involved but there's a fine line between paying like a small premium to have that versus price gouging in our, in our opinion. Right. And there's no transparency into this as to far as like these companies aren't telling you, Hey, you know, as a merchant, you're probably going to take 50% debit card, 50% credit card. So the difference between a debit card costs X versus a credit card costs is Y. We're charging you Z, you know, here's the different spreads and commissions. They're not telling you any of that information, right? Um, so with all that being said, depending on who you use, I know most of your listeners are Shopify based, which is great. We really bring value to merchants that have Shopify plus because it's a, another level that allows for customized pricing, so to speak, that gives us the ability to leverage all the data and analytics that we have. To essentially get them better pricing while staying on the Shopify platform. If you've built a website on Shopify, obviously to leave them and change is going to be not impossible, but super difficult. Something that you probably don't want to do, right? And that's why a lot of companies contract us is because they want to keep with what they have. They don't want to make any changes to the gateway, et cetera, right? Now, what we do is we say, listen, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, you're paying X, Y, Z right now at the rate. We think we can get you down to A, B, C. And we'll run our analysis, negotiations, handle that from start to finish. If we don't get to where we feel your company should be priced, we then can present other options to you and say, listen, you know, we'd be doing you a disservice not to say if you went with company X, Y, Z, here are the cost savings that you could potentially have. Now, depending on what that merchant or customer wants to do, if they have the bandwidth to make a change, if there's not that much technical aspect or integration aspect to do it, you know, they can explore those options. We ultimately don't care for our clients use at the end of the day. Our main focus is to get you the best deal possible nine out of 10 times with the provider that you're currently using. Right. Um, but that's the long winded answer to your question. That makes perfect sense. Now, as a lot of merchants do not know about that, and, and I'm surprised to to hear that how much kind of um, negotiation room is there, and also 
as I said, it's convenience. Um, Shopify makes it very easy to take Stripe, to take PayPal, and all of these very expensive pay payment gateways. Now, there is certain business types or certain merchants that sold certain products that will not be taken by every payment gateway, selling weapons, knives, I don't know, even cannabis or any, any of these things. Is sure. that something yep. you, ha you, ha you help with to find another payment gateway provider or how does that work? Yeah, absolutely. So if someone's in like, we'll call it the high risk realm, right, of processing, it doesn't mean that you're running an illegitimate business or anything like that. It's just what the banks deem to be in the high risk category, right? So for example, anyone who has a, a marijuana dispensary, right? It's not federally legal. So while a lot of states, it is legalized for a recreational use, right? Because from a federal standpoint, the baking regulations don't it's not all sunshine and rainbows, I should say, for that specific industry. Um, it's not as easy to get a merchant account. Same with like if you're selling firearms, knives online, et cetera. There's a whole laundry list of what banks classify to be a more riskier asset, so to speak, or business type. But yes, if there are businesses out there that are trying to use Shopify, PayPal, Stripe, et cetera, and you are getting denied because your underwriting team is saying, no, we don't accept this business type. Yes. We have plenty of uh, relationships that can get you approved if you wanted to go that route, or if you're already approved and you just think you're paying way too much for processing, we can obviously help you get a better deal with your, with your parent provider. Right? So plenty of different options in that, in that realm. Um, you really need to know how these processing companies think. In addition to having the data and analytics to say, you know, based on where your price at, what type of business you have, you know, transaction size, volume count, all this laundry list of things to uh, to get the best deal possible. Mm -hmm. Now, as a merchant, said Shopify Plus is um, more qualified than a, a small business for for that. How much on data or on how much on proof do you need to go into a negotiation for a, a Shopify merchant to get a better price? Yeah, so it's the e-commerce world is a little bit different, right? All, for the most part, the e-commerce payment providers are going to say, by not having the card present, you know, taking the card either over the phone, a recurring billing payment um, online through your website, that it's a riskier transaction because the card is not present. Someone is physically not there to show you their ID with their credit card, making sure that it is actually them. There's a risk of fraud and chargeback, right? So they'll leverage that point to charge you more. And that's why you see the starting rate at, you know, 2.9, 30 cents per transaction. There's a little bit of truth to that, um, but there's gray areas, right? And the data that we have allows us to see, you know, based on the type of business that you are, whether you're a consumer product or you're doing B2B sales, for example, because they can both fall into different categories that's going to dictate the type of rewards card you're going to see, corporate card, purchasing card that you're going to see, all have different interchange rates. And with over 700 different interchange rates available that you could be charged, we know, relatively speaking, the type of business that you have, what interchange rates you're going to see, and then we can calculate the service markup based on your current pricing, right? That's a lot of data that merchants don't have access to. They only have access to their data points, and that's it. You know what I mean? Um, and it does vary from industry to industry too. You know what I'm saying? So that, that plays a big factor. That's a lot of what we're leveraging as well. And we know the marketplace, right? Like if you're a merchant and you went to Adyen, Stripe, Braintree, PayPal, and Shopify, we know which of those four providers just using them as an example is going to price you the best or give you the best quote right off the bat, right? And in addition to that, we know how low they're really willing to go, how much they leverage tech over cost, right? A lot of the rebuttals you'll see from sales reps in the payment industry, especially for those companies is like, well, we're a tech company. We don't compete on cost. You know what I mean? They're trying to bring value from the different, whatever, upsells that they can do or, you know, different services that they provide. But that aside, that, that's all the stuff and data that we're leveraging that we know in the marketplace we have on current clients, et cetera, to really get them the best deal. Mm -hmm. 
it already shows that you need to have a lot of financial background information in that specific field to to make an educated decision for your client. So if somebody decides they want to um, switch to a different payment gateway provider, what's the timeline and what are the steps involved to get you up and running with a new one? Yeah, it just depends on how fast you as the customer, the merchant move, right? And what your you and your, your needs are, right? If you say, Matt, you know, I have a very, I have a legacy gateway, for example, um, authorized.net is a big payment gateway within the legacy field. And I want to make a change. That's super simple. You literally just take out the API codes in the background of your website and you plug in the new ones once your merchant account is approved, right? With, I don't want to say the more sophisticated gateways, but the ones that have much better tech right, have ability to do other things. It depends on how integrated you currently are with your current gateway situation and what you're looking to change. You know what I mean? So that's going to vary depending on the client. Um, all in all, a changeover, like a more sophisticated changeover, probably going to take a bottom month. A less sophisticated changeover is probably going to take less than a week, if that. It just depends on the approval time and the underwriting process from the provider that you want to switch to in that case, um, what technical integration that you might need with your current setup and how you do things. And the third thing that a lot of people overlook when they're switching is let's just say you're a subscription based business or you have reoccurring payments, the tokenized transaction that you have saved on file, those are the credit card data that you have saved. You have to get that information from your current processing company. And usually there's a cost to do so for all your tokenized data, which is a whole different conversation. But you pay that cost to extract that data and then you have to give it to the new provider. And then they enter all that, that tokenized data into the new gateway so that there's no, um, what's the word I'm looking for? That's consistent when you're processing the payments. You know that there's no, uh, I'm drawing a blank, but that there's not a discrepancy or anything like that. You want to make sure that you're charging the customer consistently, even if you switch gateways. And that can take time. It just depends on what uh, you're looking for if you are looking to make a change. Okay. Are there any roadblocks that your existing provider um, can throw in your way to stop you moving or that will um, slow down the process? Is that happening? Yeah, it depends. You know, we see, um, you know, if you have a specific software or enterprise resource planning tool or inventory management system, and let's just say that ties in to your gateway for whatever reason, if there's a partnership or relationship there, where that software that you use only partners with a specific gateway or processing company, you may not be able to use that software. You have to use the credit card processing company that they're affiliated with because that's what works with the system, right? Um, you could use a third party processing company or gateway if you wanted to, but it creates an extra step. Again, these, these companies know that. And they almost use that as leverage to hand tie merchants. So I'm trying to use an example, but NetSuite is a really big, you know, ERP system, right? And NetSuite thankfully does partner with multiple credit card processing companies. But if you want to make your life easier using NetSuite as a NetSuite customer and accept credit card processing payments through them as an integrated provider, you have to use one of their options. You could use a third party provider if you wanted to just creates another step. It's not a seamless. Um, and that's something that you have to weigh out the cost, right? Like if the cost is going to be minimal from making a change from what you already have, does it make sense to go through all these steps? If the cost savings is going to be drastic, what is that number? And is that cost savings, does that outweigh the extra work that you'll have to do without that seamless integration that might be there? You know what I mean? Um, so those are all things that you get to think about that we help from a consulting standpoint. And you'll see that a lot with Stripe, for example. Stripe's a big player where they partner with a ton of software companies. They are the gateway that allows the payments to be processed, but you can also use the software because that's what you're in on a day-to-day -day basis to process payments. It's a little bit different if you just have like a Shopify store or a strict e-commerce website, but those are different scenarios that we run through based on what our customers have for their existing payment landscape.
Okay. Now there's a huge potential for cost savings. Now, where do you earn money? What's your pricing structure? Our business model is strictly contingency based. So we get a percentage of the savings that we achieve our clients. That is it. So the beauty of it is, is that we do all the work up front, right? We, have, you have to, we actually have to walk the walk in order for us to get compensated. If you hire us and we negotiate with your processing company and we fail, you don't owe us anything, which is the beauty of the service, right? There's no financial risk to you whatsoever. And really, it's more of a waste of our time than it is yours because we're allocating resources to actually do business before we get compensated. Now, if we're successful, we take a percentage of that, right? Which is the beauty of it. If you win, we win, everyone wins in that scenario. And in addition to that, we're auditing your account every single month for rate increases. So yes, we get hired to negotiate. We take a percentage of the savings that we achieve your business, but as an ongoing service at no additional cost, we're auditing and policing your account to make sure that interchange rates are true. There's no markup or padding. There's no surcharging. They're not downgrading the cards. You know, they're not adding any markups anywhere else. Um, that's part of what we're doing, and that's also what you're paying us for. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have been through that process of setting up payment gateway um, gateways for four times. Uh, on four different continents. I've done it in the US, in Europe, in Asia, and in South Africa. Sure. There always was yeah. a, a complete pain in, in the neck. And um, I'm 100% sure I did it potentially not the best and most cost-saving way at all. So <laughs> yeah, I, I would sure. have loved to have you by my side back in the time. Um, where can people find out more about you guys? Yeah, if they want, um, if I can provide a link, obviously, but our website is merchantcostconsulting.com. And you can go and just check us out on how we work. You can email me directly. If you have questions, concerns, I can provide my contact information to you, Klaus, to provide it to your listeners. Um, but my email is matt, M-A-T-T, -T, at merchantcostconsulting.com. Feel free to shoot me a note, ask questions. Um, happy to provide any insight that I can and guide you in the right process. But that's the best way to reach out or just check us out online. Okay. I will put the links in the show notes, as always, then you're just one click away. Just to finish our coffee break today and to our listeners, um, that's something you should, as a merchant, you should look into that. And as you can hear from Matt, it's a very complex topic. Um, there are so many moving parts to it, which it's probably not the worse, uh, the time worse for yourself to look into it. So get in touch with Matt and uh, get a good opinion on how you can optimize your cost structure when it comes to payment gateway processes. Thanks so much, Matt, for your time today. I appreciate it, Carlos. Thanks for having me on. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.